now I'll give the floor to Willy Futre, director and co-founder of Human Rights Without Frontiers. The title of his presentation is The Activities of Frequies in the European Union. Thank you, uh, Rafaela, for giving me the opportunity to share with you some uh, recent research I have carried out about uh, FICRIS. It is in fact an update of a book uh, titled Antisect uh, Movements and State Neutrality Case Study uh, FICRIS that was published uh, in 2012 by Professor Gerhard Bézier in his journal for the study of beliefs and worldviews. And that was a, a project uh, carried out by uh, French attorney Patricia Duval and uh, myself. Uh, last summer, the US Commission on International Religious uh, Freedom, uh, USERF as it is uh, widely known, uh, published a paper about the anti-cult uh, movement in the present day Russia and in the Soviet Union, which highlighted the negative role of the European Federation of Research and Information Centers on Sectarianism, uh, better known under the acronym of uh, FECRIS. That was founded in Paris in uh, June 1994. In its paper, USERF points at Alexander Dvorkin, a notorious extremist Russian Orthodox anti cult activist who has been the vice president of FECRIS for about a dozen years. He's the liaison agent between FECRIS, an anti-cult organization largely financed by France, the champion of uh, laicity in uh, Europe, and the constellation of uh, Russian Orthodox missionary organizations characterized by their nationalistic reactionary, homophobic, and xenophobic agenda and discourse. Fekris appeared in Europe in the 1990s in the middle of a wave of collective suicides and uh, homicides inspired by some marginal religious and spiritual groups in North America, uh, Europe, and uh, Asia. It was founded at the instigation of the French Anti-Cult Association UNADFI, the acronym UNATFI, for National Union of Associations for the Defense of Family and the Individual. Since its inception, uh, FECRIS has served on its worldwide wave of panic and has easily enjoyed the support of public powers and uh, traditional uh, religions. In 2005, FECRIS got the status, the participatory uh, status as INGO at the Council of Europe. This recognition was uh, controversial. Movements defending religious freedom and scholars then voiced their disagreement. In 2009, FECRIS obtained consultative status with the ECOSOC at the United Nations and has hereby access to the UN in New York Geneva and Vienna. Throughout the last two decades, FECRIS has been mainly financed by the French state, which year after year has faithfully provided almost 100% of its budget, as Thierry Val will explain you afterwards. It can therefore be said that France has been and still is the driving force of FECRIS its aura at the international level and its influence on the policies of some member states of the European Union. FECRIS is an umbrella organization which has currently member associations in 11 EU member states, Austria, Belgium, Croatia, Finland, Germany, Italy, Poland, Spain, and Sweden. In each country, one, one local anti-cult association is affiliated to FECRIS, while in France and Germany, there are four. In the midst of the 1990s, 
the anti-cult ideology of Fekris found a particularly sympathetic ear in France, Belgium, Germany, and Austria, which were the first and only countries in the EU to create a permanent state institution claiming to monitor the alleged intrinsic dangerousness of cults, but in fact organizing cult hunting campaigns legitimized by public powers. These four states decided to work out and implement a specific anti-cult policy. Let's start with Austria. Austria created a documentation and information center on cults in 1998. It was named Federal Office on Cult Issues, Bundesstelle für Sektenfragen, and it was placed under the authority of the Federal Ministry of the Environment, Youth and the Family. The mandate of this state-sponsored body was allegedly to warn and protect society against so-called cults. A brochure titled Sekten Wissen schützt, Cults Knowledge Protects, stigmatizing such organizations was also widely distributed. The establishment and operation of a federal office about cult issues and other similar offices at the state level with the public funding was controversial. Additionally, several provinces set up offices that provided so-called information on sects and cults that was in reality stigmatizing such groups and their members. The driving force behind the anti-cult campaign of the Austrian state was the FECRIS member association called GSK, Society Against Cult Dangers, Gesellschaft gegen Sekten und Kultur und Kultgefahr which for several years was led by Friedrich Gries, a retired engineer and a committed uh, Catholic. He became the third president of FICRIS from 2005 to 2009. He was known for his aggressive activities against the Norwegian group Smith Friends, an evangelical non-denominational church that his adult daughter had freely joined. Greece's anti cult motivation was therefore a personal vendetta that tore up his own family. The brochure Sekten Wissenschutz, so Cults, Knowledge, Protects, financed and published by the Federal Office on Cult Issues, was a major tool of propaganda in the hands of Guy In 2016, Human Rights Without Frontiers published a documented research paper by Dominic Zörer about the financing of uh, GSK, Friedrich, so Friedrich's Association. He also found that it had been subsidized for many years by the city of Vienna from 1992 until 2008, and also by the state of Lower Austria from 2000 until 2010. But there was a disturbing lack of transparency concerning the precise amount of total public funding it has received and the ratio between public and private funding. According to its current website, the GSK still receives funding from the state of Lower Austria through the office generations which has been renamed to Department of Families and Generations. In Germany, another country in Europe, in the EU, the, parliamentary, the Parliament set up a commission of inquiry in 1996, which published a report in June 1998. However, in the aftermath of this report, there was no political majority to create a state-sponsored cult observatory and to define a specific policy targeting so-called cults, except for the Church of Scientology, created by Ron Herbart in the US, and the Unification Church, created by Reverend Moon in South Korea. Both were viewed as a threat to the German constitution. 
the ban on Mr. and Mrs. Moon access to the German territory commissioned by the Interior Ministry in 1995 was prolonged in 1998 by three more years and was only considered unjustified in 2007 by the Higher Administrative Court of Rhineland-Palatinat after 12 years of legal wrangling. As to the Church of Scientology, it was placed under surveillance of the Federal Office of Protection of the Constitution, Bundesamt für Verfassungsgeschutz. The church fought back on several fronts and in 2003 was granted the same tax-free status as other churches. In April 2005, Saarland's uh, Higher Administrative Court put an end to the Church Scientology's intelligence surveillance on the grounds that seven years of surveillance had failed to yield, to yield any results justifying any prolongation. However, a blatant discriminatory measure has persisted for more than 20 years, the so-called cult filters. In September 2019, Human Rights Without Frontiers addressed this issue of cult filters in an oral and written statement at the OSCE or DEAR Human Dimension Implementation Meeting in Warsaw, saying, and I quote, in Bavaria and a few other German lenders, the authorities use what they call sect filters. When someone applies for a public job, a public service contract or a government bit. These sect filters contain questions exclusively targeting the possible affiliation or relationship of the candidate with Scientology. If so, the candidacy will be disqualified and so will it be if the applicant refuses to fill in the questionnaire. This is not only intrusive and discriminatory, but this gravely violates the international human rights standards and stigmatizes the followers of Ron Hubbard as sub-citizens. The teachings of Scientology are not banned in Germany and spreading them is not a criminal activity. Therefore, their followers should not be treated differently from the followers of the Bible, the Quran, the Bhagavad Gita, the Buddhist or any other teachings. End of the quote at the, in the statement that I made at the OSC. In fact, Germany didn't need a specific the state agency to elaborate an ethical policy and action plan. The report of its parliamentary enquete commission was sufficient for the four uh, FICRIS member associations and dozens of ethical groups supported and funded by the Catholic Church and the Lutheran Church to legitimize their cult hunting activities. Let's now, let's now come to France and Belgium. Although I will leave it to Thierry Val after me to speak about France, where four FECRIS member associations have been for decades the driving forces of a very aggressive anti-cult policy at the level of the state, a common course of action has been adopted both by France and Belgium. Creation of a parliamentary commission, publication of a report about cults, and a list of almost 200 allegedly suspicious religious groups, creation of governmental agencies to fight against such groups, close collaboration with private anti-cult movements, such as FECRIS member associations, promulgation of specific laws targeting the stigmatized group, implementation of large-scale policies targeting such groups, harassment by the tax administration and other state agencies. In Belgium, a parliamentary commission of inquiry was set up in April 1996. A report about the illegal practices of cults and the danger they can pose to society and individuals, particularly minors, was published a year later. 
a controversial list of 189 allegedly suspicious movements was attached to the report. The magnitude of the stigmatization that this report and this blacklist created was heavily criticized by European and American scholars in religious studies at the OSCE and at the UN in particular. On the 2nd of June, 98, the Belgian parliament promulgated the, and I quote, law creating an information and advisory center on harmful sectarian organizations, end of the quote. In brief, it is uh, called the CIA OSN and an administrative coordination agency for the fight against harmful sectarian organizations. All these legislative steps clearly indicated an alignment on the Fikris anti cult ideology. This bias was confirmed by the appointments of the successive CIA OSN boards of directors. At the time, the FICRIS affiliated member association in Belgium was an obscure group created by some activists who were unknown by experts on religious matters. The influence of FICRIS in Bel on Belgium's policy was and is to be mainly attributed to the very aggressive policy of France inspired by the FECRIS four member associations there. After two decades of international criticisms, the composition of the new board of directors of the CIA OSN, so the state uh, uh, sect or cult observatory, put in place in July 2020, last year, now shows a very different face from former appointees. But the political objective remains the fight against so-called harmful sectarian organizations. The board comprises four French-speaking and four Dutch-speaking members, magistrates, lawyers, jurists, police, intelligence services, politicians, and so on. I will not go into the details of the investigation that I made about each of the members of the board of directors, but I will just say that the current president is the director of the so-called Committee R in Belgium that is in charge of the oversight of the Belgian intelligence services from 2006 to 2018. The list of substitute members also comprises of eight members, including five members of previous boards, and one of them, Mireille Stahlmaster Degen is worth mentioning as she, she presents herself uh, on her LinkedIn page as FECRIS Secretary General, the umbrella organization. It is also worth stressing that Eric Brasseur, retired director of the CIA OSN, so the State Observatory of Cults, is on the list of substitute members. The anti-cult ideology continues to permeate the activities of the CIA OSN, as it is evidenced by a study of its website, support for the activities of FICRIS and two of its member associations uh, in France. There is also a bias against the movement of Jehovah's Witnesses, about which the CIA OSN mainly relies on press clippings while largely ignoring academic studies. The publicity in favor of four Belgian anti-cult organizations on the website of the CIA OSN also raises some questions and concerns. One of them, AVISO, acronym for Aid to Victim of Cults, is FICRIS Member Association in Belgium. The composition of its nine member board speaks for itself. A few examples. André Frédéric, so, is the president of the anti cult organization, member of FECRIS board since 2018, socialist senator and promoter of the law on the abuse of weakness targeting cults in 2012. Eric Brasseur, already mentioned, 
former director of CIA OSN. Mireille Fekris, secretary general, former member and currently substitute member of CIA OSN board. Daddy De Chouskas, member of CIA OSN board. Robert Blanchard, a well-known journalist uh, at La Libre Belgique, uh, who has regularly supported CIA OSN activities. Obviously, and that's part of my conclusion now, the anti cult ideology of the CIA OSN continues to be strongly influenced by Fekris ideology, despite the warnings of the US Commission of the International Freedom in the US. And the cult issue in Belgium is still politically perceived by the authorities as a potential cluster of illegal, criminal, and security threatening activities. In conclusion of my presentation, I will quote the recommendations of USERF uh, to the US government. And I quote, publicly censor Alexander Dvorkin, vice president for his ongoing disinformation campaign against religious minorities. Counter propaganda against new religious movements by the Fekris at the annual OSCE HIDM about the ongoing involvement of individuals and entities within the anti cult movement in the suppression of religious freedom. France, Belgium, Austria, Germany, and other EU member states should seriously take these recommendations into consideration and implement social distancing from FICRIS and its affiliate. Thank you for your patience and attention. Thank you, William.